Hello and welcome everyone to Crossway Kids Children's Church. Oh, I'm hoping you're excited as excited we are. Hey, thanks for joining us. Let's just pray in. Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we ask you to uh, send your word out to each and every child out there and bless the parents, Lord, um, for your word is living and powerful. And we know, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, we just praise you for the free gift of salvation. And I just ask you to bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, if you missed last week, what we learn is Jesus Christ is creator. And how do we know this? Well, because all things were made through him and without him, well, nothing was made or created. And since Jesus Christ is creator, only he can bring life and give life to his creation. And you know what? Verse 4 says that Jesus Christ is the life and the light for everyone. So today, we are going to learn that Jesus Christ is what? Exactly the source of all life. All right. But first, let's review last week's scripture memory. Does anyone know John 1, 3? Great. Kids, keep up the good work. If not, hey, Elijah, let's sing it to help those who don't have it. All things were made through. Kids, hey, kids, did you know that in verse 4 of John 1, the word life is not only talking about the physical life, the life as we know it, but it's talking about the divine, the spiritual life. Yes, eternal life. You all know that, right? Because you know the life that Jesus Christ gives is so you can live with him forever. You remember when I talked about how we all have a start point and end point? Not Jesus Christ. He's eternal. And this is the eternal life we can have through him. So, because he is the life and the light for all, hey, I guess you could say it. He is the life and life for everyone. So let's sing it. This is John 1, 4. is the source of all life because he has all the light and life for all men, children, everyone. So let's go on to our next thing. And here it is. 
before we read scripture, I think we need to get the wiggles out. Does everybody want to get the wiggles out? All right, here we go. Woo! Ready? I think we all know this song. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Great job, kids. I think now it's time to read the scripture of the day. And that will be John 1, verse 4 and 5. And it says this. It says, In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Okay, kids, are you ready to play a game? Yeah? Do you want to play a game? All right, let's play a game. Now, this game is called Good or Bad. All right, the game is very easy to play. So I will ask you questions and you need to answer by saying good or bad. Now, don't worry if you don't know how to answer the questions, but just listen very carefully, okay? You ready? All right, question number one. Here we go. After the sixth day of creation, God saw everything that he made and said it was good or bad. What do good. you think, kids? Good. Yes, good. All right. You're starting to get the hang of this game, huh? If all creation is good, then the light is good or bad. Yes, it is good. So, question three. If light is good and brings life, then God is always good or bad. Kids, can you answer that? Good. Yes, good. All right. Now, in the garden, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sinned which basically means they did something wrong or they went against what God asked them to do. And so sin entered the world. Was that good or bad? What bad. Do you... Okay, it was bad. I'll agree with that. But what if you are stuck in a dark room and you can't see anything? Is that good or bad? Oh, I think so. So, let's go to the next question. The Bible explains that sin is darkness and is evil. So, evil is always good or bad. What do you think, kids? Bad. Of course, it's bad. All right, one last question here. You guys are playing this game great. Have any of us ever done something wrong? You know, like disobeying our parents or God. Is that good or bad? Bad. It is bad. Now, here's the thing. Was anybody 
able to admit that they ever done something wrong? <laughs> well, me too. I know I've done a lot of things wrong. And just like Adam and Eve, did you know when we do wrong, the Bible calls it sin? And sin is evil. Sadly, sin, and we're going to learn about this in our next one, sin entered God's world that he created. And the Bible in Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned. And every person does wrong is basically what it says. And so there is sin. Where there is sin, there's darkness. You know, darkness is like stealing, cheating, disrespect, anger. But God never knew sin because he's perfect. Now, that is what it means when we hear people say that God is holy, that means he's set apart from us because God never ever sinned. Jesus Christ never sinned. He never did anything wrong. So we cannot be with God, the Bible says, because our sin uh, is like, is, is separating us. And because darkness and light will never mix. So we can't be with God. If we have some darkness in us, because evil is like darkness. But the good news is this, kids. Darkness can never put out light. Did you know light always wins? Yes. Look at verse 5. It says this. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Hmm. So I asked you earlier, if you were stuck in a dark room and you couldn't see anything, you said that was bad. And I agree with you. It is bad. It sure is. But it's not good when you know you are lost. Right, kids? <laughs> right. I agree. But the truth is the tiniest little light would be seen in that room you would be stuck in no matter where you are. And that light would let you know where to find the switch and to get out. Because what we read in verse 5, darkness can never overcome the light. Which really means overcome, which that means is it can never take control of. It can't be on the top. So, no matter how dark it is, light will always be seen. That's right. And did you know Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. Oh, that is amazing, kids. Jesus is the light of the world. And did you know what he said on the first day of creation? Didn't he say what? Let there be light. And so there was light. Hey, that was kind of fun. And guess what? You know, we got a game that we can play and it's kind of an objective lesson it's called light chaser okay so we're gonna play this game i'm gonna have my wife explain it this is a fun game that is played in the dark give one person a flashlight everyone is to run and hide elijah will have the flashlight now and everyone will run and hide. Then another person is designated to yell, shine your light. Elijah, who would you like to yell, shine your light? Daddy. Okay, Daddy. The person with the light turns it on and all the others try to locate them and run to them as quickly as they can. The last one to reach them in the, is the light bearer for the next round. 
Let's see how it's played. Shine your light! I made it! You're I'm the, here! You're the next light keeper! Okay, great! Wait a minute. Why am I? Where's everyone else? Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm the only one playing. Oh yeah, so that makes me last. Huh. Hey, that was pretty cool. And remember, Jesus is the light of the world. And there will always be a struggle between darkness and light. But you see, because Jesus Christ is the light of the world, just as I ran, or if you play the game, you run quickly to find the one who held the light, so should we run all to Jesus Christ and draw close to him because he is the light of the life. And of all people, and the light is full of truth. So Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And remember, darkness has not overcome it. And God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And whomever believes unto him shall not perish or end, but have everlasting life. So you're probably asking, how can we follow Jesus? Well, Psalm 119, 105 tells us, it says, your word is the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. Now, I have a craft that I wanna show you that you can do at home. Here it is. So, you're gonna take a piece of construction paper. I'm using black because black represents darkness. Now you can use any color, but what you wanna do is, you first wanna cut off a strip, just like this, just one little strip, that will be the handle. And then you wanna take the paper, Fold it the long way, just like this. You're going to fold it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make strips almost all the way about an inch from the top. And you separate them just like this. You make strips all the way up. And then what's going to happen is you get done with it and you're going to have a, a lantern. Now that handle you cut out, you can either tape it or you can... Um, staple it. I use the stapler and we're going to hold this because you know what? John 17, 17 basically says, it says, make me right by your word for your word is truth. Now let's think about this. If the Bible says we are walking in darkness and we're blind, we can't see the spiritual things of God. So we're going we're gonna to show you what it's like. The word is the lamp to my feet, light to my path. When we read God's word, we start to, we start to have a light. And every time we read the Bible, for Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And then we walk with him. And he gives us the way, the path, because the word is the lamp to my feet, the light to my path. And that's why we need Jesus Christ, because he is the light of the world. In him, we have light. Without him, we are in darkness. But God created the light on the third day or first day and he said let there be light and there is light so guess what kids this is how I want to close when Jesus Christ God spoke the universe in creation he spoke let there be light but this was not the only light light like the sun the moon the stars uh the literal light like the daytime no, kids, he filled the universe with the light of his presence, truth. Remember, the word is the lamp to my feet and, and the light to my path. Or the word is the lamp to my feet and light to my path. 
And it says, make me right by your word for your word is truth. That's right. Jesus filled the universe with the light of his presence, truth. He created the world and filled everything in it with his truth so that everything would reflect his character. And so it is in John 1, 4. In him was life and the life was the light of men, all human beings. This makes Jesus Christ the source of all life. So kids, keep practicing your scripture memory. Get your parents involved. I say goodbye to you, but I'm going to leave you with this truth. And I'm going to sing it in a song. Let's do it, Elijah. Here we go. This is John 8, 12. And it goes like this. I am the light. Thank you so much for your participation and how you shepherd your children. We are so grateful. God bless you. Grace be upon you. And I hope you had a great Easter. Father, uh, we, we send our love to you all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.